Hi, Stamping Friends. It's Marilyn here at Stamping Creations with Marilyn. As you can see, I am trying a new streaming system today. Hi, Stamping Friends. It's Marilyn here at Stamping Creations. And of course, got a few kinks to, to um, clear up there. So like I say, I've been trying this for for a few days now trying to see if I'm going to be able to make it work and I think I've got got it working so we'll give it a try let me know if you will in the comments as you join in please let me know where you're coming from um, I'm in Spruce Grove Alberta Canada and we are starting starting to enjoy spring like weather most of the days we had a day last week I think that was up to 16 17 above Celsius for, and that's really good for us in March um, this morning wasn't quite so great it was like minus six and looked beautiful outside I did go out on the front deck and quickly came back in and was happy I didn't have a dog to walk <laughs> kind of thing so so it'll be cool for a few days and there was snow on the ground again um, a little bit today but uh, it's coming and we're having longer days which I think is partly due to the, the time change that we had last weekend. But uh, anyway, please let me know where you're coming from. If you're new, welcome. Glad to see you here. If uh, you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I am hoping that I will be able to see some comments and perhaps comment on them as we go. Maybe not. And if I can't, of course, I will come back and, and answer them all afterwards. I have lots of exciting things to share today. We have, as demonstrators, we have a new catalog coming out tomorrow afternoon that we'll be able to look at online. We won't have it in our hands for a few weeks yet, but <clears throat> we will be able to look at it. And in conjunction with that is a retiring list from the annual catalog that will be retiring on the 3rd of May. So I will be sending that out to those of you who subscribe to my newsletter. So if you don't, uh, the newsletter uh, form to subscribe to it is in the the, the uh, title of this Facebook Live, and you can um, always join in, sign up, and you'll get it tomorrow. Like, it'll come out tomorrow afternoon, because I believe we get access to it about 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock our time, so we'll be after that. So, hi, Terry. I do see comments. That's great. Thank you for doing that. And like I say, please... Um, comment where you're from and the other thing with thinking of spring why don't you leave me a message uh, in the comments as to what is your favorite part of spring I'm sure we all have some favorite of spring after after a winter like we've had uh, what else did I want to let you know oh this streaming system and what I've been learning is all thanks to a gal who is on Facebook under a, a group called Tech Help for S Stampin Up Demonstrators and I know a number of you who watch me on the Facebook Live and on the YouTube where I upload it to afterwards, you are demonstrators. So I just wanted to share that with you because this gal is amazing with her tech information. I know I'm able to help a lot of you with it, but nothing like what she is. So, so give it a whirl and see what's there. I have, um, I have a couple things I'm going to do different. The cards I make each week, I will be putting everyone's name who does a comment on my Facebook lives I will be putting their name in a draw and uh, send a card out to you so I'm sure happy mail is a good thing I have some tutorials to share with you so I'm going to see if I can get this to work just a sec if I go here you're looking at my desktop which was quite simple to do and the first tutorial I have is the butterfly brilliance Actually, that's not the desktop. That's my graphic for it. But this is the desktop, and there's the butterfly brilliance. So you can see I'm offering for anyone who purchases this bundle for $74.50 from me, whether it's online or via me, I will send you a tutorial with videos on how to make these four cards. So unfortunately... The designer paper that was with this bundle is no longer available, but there are some gorgeous samples out there with designer paper, 
and you can always make your own with the, the big stamp with that. So any of these bundles, if you would like more information, just let me know. So the next one that was on that list is my Pretty Perennials bundle class. And that I have three cards with a video and PDF tutorial. And also the Sweet Strawberry bundle. And that one, there are four different cards. That one is a bundle with a punch. Um, the Pretty Perennials is a die cut and so are the, are the butterflies. This particular one I believe is back ordered yet, but we have been told that it is going to carry over to the new catalog. So therefore, we know that we can still get it. So let me just come back. I think I had one other thing I wanted to share with you here. A couple things. The in colors. So the in colors, Stampin' Up! has in colors, five new in colors each year. And right now, they're busy teasing the demonstrators with what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to, to be for the next ones? And of course, uh, there's lots of guesses happening and whatever. But in the process, the ones that were out for 2019 to 2021 are retiring. So I just wanted to point these out. These are the five colors and let you know that if you're wanting any of those, whether it be ink, ink pad, um, ribbon, cardstock, anything that has those colors in it will be retiring. And we've learned from past experience that the ink refills for sure will be will be gone first. So don't hesitate to um, to shop for those. Now the other get out of that one, get out of that one. Just give you a heads up. I'm going to have a special for the week of my birthday. So I'd like you to celebrate my birthday week with me. It will be, your name will go in a draw for a stamp set and some designer paper if you place an order with me of a certain amount during that week from April 4th to 9th. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that. So let's go back to the desktop. And looks like everybody is, I see some comments. Hi, Bonnie. That's good. Things are happening. Your names are there. Bonnie, Terry. Great, great to see you. Thanks for joining me and anyone else who's there. So this is the card we did last week. And like I said, from now on, I'm going to put your name in a draw if you comment on my posts. And this one, I did put a your names in a draw and the winner for this one is Terry. So welcome back. And I will send that to you because I do have your, your address. So next, oh, other classes. I have a birthday card class that I'm going to have coming in April and my card club, which some of you know of, as well as our Friday Zoom class. So any of those that you would like to know more about, just message me and I will certainly get the information to you. We'd love to have others join. So today, I think that's all. If there's any questions, concerns, whatever, let me know and uh, we will follow up with it however we can. So this is the card that I have been working on and I want to share, I'm going to make the other one of these because obviously two, two and two, but I want to show you a couple things with it. So with this particular one, if I can hold it, can't tell if you can see or not. I use the, mm -hmm, don't have it in front of me, the embossing folder. I'm going to get in one. I think I probably put it away already. Anyway, any, any embossing folder will work. This one I use the diamonds. This one I use that new, it looks like painted uh, plaster. And these I use the subtle one, which I mentioned in my instructions for you. And uh, again, <laughs> can't remember that one. It was one, <clears throat> pardon me, that was just introduced to us. So any of the embossing folders will work. I am using for these words, the Arranger Wreath. They have multitude of different or 
occasions. There's even Easter eggs, a couple of pears, partridge in a pear tree, I guess, and hearts, lots of lots of things that you can do with that particular set. The paper that I'm using on here is the True Love designer paper. And it has just black and white, but look at how gorgeous it is. You can color, there's lots of people coloring these with the blends or with our blending brushes that we now have. Um, just lots of choices, but for this particular thing, and you can see I've used quite a bit of that, I have just used designer paper and flipped it, used the other side. Oh, that's my da da uh, dainty diamonds, not dazzling diamonds, embossing folder. So let's tuck these away for now. And I'll show you how I did this. And uh, if you've got your your papers ready, craft along with me. I'd love to have you joining me. So I have my regular eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and burnished. So that is my base. I have my designer paper that I'm going to use, and I wanted to show you on our new, I really need more space, on our new paper trimmer, how easy it is to, to do this cutting. Oh, first of all, the two squares that you needed were two and five eighths, I believe, yes, and somewhere, oh, okay. Is. Not a special sheet. Look at that. Forgot to, forgot to bring it over here. What I have done with mine, because I wanted them to be exact, was I drew them out. Can you see that? And I'm going to place them when I glue them according to that drawing that I have. But before we get there, I'm going to cut the paper. So I've got these cut at one and a quarter this way and then I discovered it was pretty hard to hold my paper over here and cut because by the time you put this down and whatever on this trimmer we have the capability of one and a quarter inch on this side so to do this it was just a piece of cake to put it into one and a quarter I like cutting on the small pieces I like cutting up this way because it's pushing it against the, the edge that holds it. So you need four of those. And so that will be my four striped. And then I'm just going to flip the, you wouldn't have to flip it over to cut it, but I'm going to use the other side So, I could have had those cut and ready, but I just wanted to point out to you that you can use that guide on the other side of the cutting channel, and it works amazingly well. So, remember that. I need to, I like to get all my pieces ready before I start the gluing, which I have mentioned to you before. And for this particular one, I, okay, somewhere I had lost it already. <laughs> I did have an oval cut out. <laughs> okay. Oh well. <clears throat> I have another. I have the punch that cuts it out. What the heck did I do with it? I may have to finish putting it all together when I'm afterwards. I have more paper in the drawer over here, so I can uh, can do that. Just this punch is a double oval punch, and it's made to for things like this for layering. So as you can see, it, it works really well. And <clears throat> I had stamped this earlier because I was busy doing stamping, 
the, with the samples. And if you're going to do this where you want to only cut out the bottom part, you might want to make just a, a smaller layer so you're not wasting. But I would line it up like that. And there's my happy Easter. And I don't know if black and white is really the best color for Easter, but it works. It, as I pointed out with the others, you can see other colors. And it makes you realize that you can do almost anything with this design. So let's just move that out. And this is the big cut and emboss machine. And I'm going to use the Dainty Diamonds 3D embossing folder. And what I found with my folder, ah, you're right, Bonnie, it probably is under my grid sheet. Thank you. I have started putting what plates I need on the, especially on the, the thicker 3D folders, because I have some of the older ones, some of the newer ones, and I'm always confused. So the plates are numbered with these machines now. Although I just read that uh, some of them are going out recently with the numbers on them. And it was, a, of course, a, a defect by the supplier. And I'll try not to shake too, too bad. <laughs> but for that 3D one that says number four, all I need is my base plate and the number four plate. And I can do the embossing. So there it is. Um, the diamond one I really like because it kind of goes with the diamond shape that we're dealing with. And you're right, there it is, Bonnie. Thank you. Okay, so I think my pieces are ready. I used liquid glue for my squares, but I used dimensionals to put my Happy Easter on, so I'll do that again. And I might as well do that before I lose that piece again. But I'm sure I'm not the only one that's done something like that. Have you ever lost something like that and never found it? I have a friend who at Christmas time lost Santa's pants out of a, a die cut set. And to be honest with you, I don't think she's ever found it. She has gone through everything. I have lost the maple leaf out of one of the die sets I have. And it's really disappointing because I like the maple leaf. But I, it must have gone out with the garbage or stuck to somebody's clothes or something because I looked everywhere, went through every die set before I sold some of them. Yeah, never did show up. So anyway, I'm going to put this on just with liquid glue again because of it being embossed the liquid glue will go in those grooves on the back and, and stay better and then this will go down near the bottom on the other one this one I put it over in the corner and I did because I was flipping the colors here the black and the white I used silver embossing to um, have the, the words stand out on that one. So I'm just going to do that while I've got it here again so I don't lose it. And you don't need a lot of glue. The other thing, of course, as we mention often, is that that glue allows you a little bit of wiggle room. So there's our base. And when it comes to these, like I say, I had, of course, wanted them to be exact in my world. And so what I've did was just glued like this because as you can see this one's going to fit there it's not going to fit and then I can attach it and of course it runs out like that wipe it off with your finger so that's our base and then virtually all you're doing is going to alternate with gluing these on. The trickiest part, and sometimes it doesn't look straight. Hold that. Oh, yeah. It's 
not straight. No wonder it didn't look straight. I might have to cut some more. I don't like what it, this is doing. Oh dear. You notice, if you look at that, and it won't work if it's not <laughs> exact, so two and five eighths. two and five eighths and I will try and get it I thought I was holding it pretty straight but obviously not so let's try that again maybe I should start with that one instead looks better and maybe I can restore or recover that one or not sure but but we'll see okay so to start the only tr the the trickiest part is the first one you don't want to glue totally down because when you get around to the end of it you're going to want to tuck the, the very last one underneath it so I'm going to put this one on with just a, a tiny border and I'm going to glue just a little bit on this edge to hold it. It doesn't matter which point I start at. So you just alternate as you go. And this is one we had at, uh, I had a meeting on Saturday and my upline, Karen Duke, taught us this. And oh, that is, and like she said, what a way to use use little pieces of paper. This is one, one and a quarter inches of paper, like. And if you want to keep the lines going straight, fine. I particularly want them opposite. And the other thing to remember as you go is that this edge lines up as you go around. So it's just a matter of Going round and round and round and round. So, so tell me what else you've been crafting. Are you making crafts for Easter? I know some of you do lots of things for Easter. I, uh, of course, with with our COVID situation, we won't be seeing grandkids again this Easter. But I'll see if I can uh, come up with something. I read a, a post today actually that those clear boxes that we have they're two by two by two they hold it was three or four of the little Easter eggs and they work just dandy for Easter treats and I still have some of those so so maybe doing that and okay I don't want that to be the same so you can see if if you have like different designer paper, whatever, it might show up different, but I don't think any of it's wrong. And then for the last one, you will glue it down or apply glue on all of it. And because we left this one up, it's just going to tuck, well, if I could handle it with... under there. Isn't that neat? And then I will go back and add some liquid glue along here to hold that last little edge down. So there you go. Simple as that. Doesn't take much at all. And then for mine, I just put adhesive on this bottom one that's going to fit because this is raised a little bit. It's not going to To, uh, and again, you could place it like this. I find I like it that way, so I'm going to do that. And I have quite a number of, ah, 
there's that other embossing folder I was telling you about, painted texture called. I do have the black matte dots, and I do have these frosted and clear epoxy. And what's really neat with these kind of embellishments is they come on these plastic sheets and you could lay it over there and, oh yeah, I like that. Um, don't know so much about, nah, I think I'm going to, and with having them in those containers, they're easy to, to keep. These do come in, oh my goodness, about all kinds, in shiny or the, the frosted. I like the frosted. So I am going to, if I can peel it off of there, that's what I'm going to put on. And there is my card. So if you're making one, like I say, please, please share it with us afterwards below the video. It would be great. Um, that is how quick and easy you can do that. So it's a, again, a design, and yes, I will put a white piece inside it later. A design that you can certainly, if you get everything ready, you could sit and watch a lot of TV and, and do that, I'm sure. So those are the two with the black base with white. These are two I did with white base with black, and I added just a little butterfly on each of them. So the same, uh, this is the same paper as what we just did, and this is that one. So, And then I thought, okay, let's try a different color. So I went and got my Pets designer paper, and this is the flip side of it. And on these, I stamped first, and then ran them through the embossing folder, so you don't even need that extra layer if you don't want it. And this is the ice cream cone one, which again, we're using the cinnamon cider, one of the new end colors, and that has, uh, we have embellishments that, that go with the end colors. So of course, the ones that are, the end colors that are retiring will be gone, but, but this has the cinnamon cider dots, so that's what I use there. They're a bit smaller, but they still add just that little bit of pizzazz to it. So, that's all that I had for the, for the class, but I do have some cards to share with you. I uh, have recently done some in a swap, and these first couple, Bonnie, of course, you'll recognize these because they were from our monthly card class, but they're done with the Butterfly butterfly Brilliance set. Quick and easy, done with the note cards, so they come with the envelope. Another Happy Easter done with the acetate that is either Highland Heather or, or Gorgeous, no, this is Gorgeous Great, Highland Heather, I believe that is, and... Uh, Rococo Rose, so that one, again, another retiring color. We did a different heart-shaped clover for St. Patrick's Day. This one I did in our class on Friday, which both Bonnie, you and Terry have been to, um, but really a neat design that Linda shared with us with an opening, and again, this paper is retiring. So then I get on to some swap cards. This is one that uh, Karen Yeomans did using the strawberry punch to make pears. And I was so impressed. I, I contacted her to find out how she, what stamp set she used for the, the stems. She actually drew them. Isn't that amazing? What a talented lady. Uh, another one with the ice cream paper from Carmen. Great, great design, and one of the four by four, I believe, yeah, well, four and a quarter, four and a quarter square, but they do fit in our regular envelopes for mailing. Uh, this one, oh, I didn't keep the name. This one, I believe, is done by Marie. Um, again, the cinnamon cider and the flower paper. This one's from Lillian with the happy birthday from the Hey Chick, or the birthday chick, and the designer paper that we can't get anymore from the butterflies. And another one with the happy birthday from Pretty Perennials, which is that set that I was mentioning earlier. And can you see this one? If I hold it right, maybe. Has 
this design along it. This is a die set that's in the mini catalog that does not cut out. It just puts that that image on it. So, so those are the things I wanted to share with you. So let me see if I can make this work to come back to talk to you for a minute. There I am. Good. Looks like everything is working. So, so thank you for joining me. And if you're catching the replay, please stamp along, create along with us and uh, post it in the, the comments below. We'd love to see what you're making. As well as if you're here and you were making with us, we'd uh, love to have you. And let me know. I will be sending out an email tomorrow, like I say, with the retired products on it. And us as demonstrators, which you can still sign up for, we'll get to see the new catalog tomorrow. So pretty exciting times. So thanks again, and we'll catch you next.